Hey guys, hope you're all having a great day. In this video, I'm gonna get some garden chores done for the fall, just a lot of fall cleanup stuff. Um, I made another video that was posted right before this one, so if you wanna check that out, you could see some of the other stuff that I've done. That was at my mom's house. Sorry, there's a lot of cars driving by. Um, that was at my mom's house, but I'm gonna go to my dad's house today. I have a loaded car full of stuff, um, and I just wanna show you what I'm gonna bring over there, and then once we get there, I'll show you what it is that we're gonna be working on. So I've got kind of a mess of stuff in the back of my car. Um, I made some nice winter containers with just some greens that I found throughout the yard. So this is full with um, different things. Like you can see, this is a U, but there's other stuff packed underneath here. Um, so I'm going to be taking out the gazania containers that I have, which I'll show you, um, pot them up with some winter greens. And then I just have like a couple drills. This is from all the bulb planting that I did. I borrowed my dad's drills when I had them over here. So I'm gonna return those back to him. This is the wilt stop that I'm gonna use with this stuff as well. I've got like my shoes, tripod, all that kind of stuff. Um, but that's pretty much it. Okay, so maybe not that full. But we're gonna head over to my dad's and then I'll show you what we're gonna be cleaning up and also moving today. Okay, so I've made it to my dad's house. Um, there's not a ton that we're gonna be doing here. I'm not sure if we're gonna be cleaning up the leaves and that kind of stuff just because it rained a lot the last day or so. Um, we'll see what we can work on. But for perennials and cutting stuff back, there definitely is a lot of work to do with that. So let me just give you a brief overview of what stuff we're gonna be working on. I just wanna also say it's very windy, so I apologize if there's a lot of wind noise. I'm gonna try to keep it to a minimum as much as I can. Um, but starting off in this bed over here, this lamb's ear has gotten really close to the edge here, so I might cut a little bit of that plant back just to keep it somewhat in check. Um, we're going to leave that sedum. I'm trying to keep my shadow out of the way too. This columbine, I don't know if I want to cut that back today. I might look up to see if I should be doing that. But this columbine probably could be using a cutback for the rest of the season. These are two more Carl Forrester grasses that we planted too, by the way, because we had these three originally and then these two were added. Um, and then the other thing, I'll talk to my dad about this. We might get rid of the black eyed Susans that are there because they get really shaded out. Or if anything, I might move some of them over to the back bed over there. So I'll show you that area. In the succulent bed, actually I have this plant right here, I forgot, this is not even potted up. Uh, so I have a succulent plant which matches this one here. I'm just going to plant it right next to it and make a larger clump of it. These cacti, I need to prune back for the season. I actually need to throw these out. We can't compost these because they grow like crazy and they just get everywhere. Um, but they get kind of too big. You see how it's growing over these other plants. We'll cut back that sedum as well and that sedum and just kind of clean up this area. Um, these really need to go inside. These are the guava trees. I'm surprised they've actually made it through the frost that we've had. Gazania pots. This is what I was talking about that I want to put the greens in. We have these three pots here. So, um, I know they still have some flowers, but they're, they're done for the season. So we'll fill those up with some greens. I might not keep all three. I might just do two pots. We'll see. Um, this is doing very well too. I'm very happy to see that this, um, hardy succulent arrangement has done very well. Moving over here, this, um, Russian sage. I don't know exactly what variety this is, but we have a pussy willow and then a hinoki cypress here. And the two of them have just shaded this out too much, especially that now that this um, birch tree is really starting to gain some size. So this is becoming a little bit more shaded. So I want to move this today to the back bed as well and just fill up some of those spaces now that we have like our main stuff in. Um, moving to the backyard... We're not really going to do anything with these honeysuckles. Um, these are looking gorgeous. This lavender. I love this. This is a nice compact variety. I just don't remember the name. Um, anyways, moving on. Getting distracted. The garden, I think we're going to clean up what we can today. I have some fall crops growing. So like the kale, Swiss chard, we'll keep all of that. This Swiss chard has been insane. This actually I did from winter sowing. And it still looks crazy. Um, peas are doing well. They're starting to flower, so hopefully we'll get some peas out of that before it gets too, too cold. Carrots are doing well. I just thinned those out. Broccoli is okay. I don't know if the broccoli will actually grow. Um, third bed. Yeah, we'll just try to clear this out, clean it out as much as we can. There's sunflowers to get rid of. Um, there's some zinnias. These I'll, type, I'll talk about in a second, but there's more zinnias over there that we need to get rid of. Um, so just annuals like that that we need to rip out for the rest of the, for the you know, end of the season. What I will say about these, these are the purple cone flowers. What I need to do with these is you can see that they're right at the front of the bed and they grew literally four feet tall, like way too tall for the very front of this bed. Um, but if I show you behind here, there is some space in between this Rose of Sharon and then this Arborvitae. So I'm going to move some of these purple cone flowers more to this back area over here um, and just kind of fill up that space. And then we'll leave room for a smaller perennial that we can put in the front, just so that way we don't have something so tall right at the very front and block the stuff that's behind it. Um, moving over here, I mean, not much else really needs to be done. 
yeah, we can cut this back, or not cut this back, we can rip this out. This is the super tunia that we had. We'll cut this back. Um, everything else I think we can pretty much leave. The only thing is over here, there's an astilbe, these little spikes that are standing. Um, we can cut this astilbe back for the season and the hostas as well. We can cut those back for the rest of the season. So we're just gonna get started on this, just plug away at everything that we gotta work on for today. Um, it was raining a lot this morning and it's turned out to be a beautiful, quite warm day. It's like 70 degrees, um, but it's gonna be very cold after today. So we're really just trying to take advantage of this nice warm weather. All right, with that being said, let's get started.
Okay, so we are all done after yet another hard day's work. This is two days in a row for me, but I love it. Um, let me show you everything that we did. There's a couple things I didn't end up recording, so I just wanna show you those things as well, um, and then we'll be done. So just right off the bat, I didn't even say anything about the front yard, but thankfully my dad actually cut the grass today and picked up a lot of those leaves. So that is looking all nice and cleaned up. But let's spin to the other side of the driveway. Over here, the first thing that I ended up doing was, you can see this uh, Daisy May, uh, Shasta Daisy, that's what this is. We actually split this into three different clumps. Um, what happened was it ended up kind of falling over in the spring um, because it was kind of on an angle the way that it was growing just because it's like a bit of a, a grade down. So we split it into three and we made sure each one of these clumps is facing straight up. So that looks pretty good. I did run into a couple bulbs there, but they're actually starting to grow, which is awesome because I just planted those a few weeks ago. Um, but nonetheless, this is looking pretty good. Um, oh, I have a couple hydrangea blooms here. You'll see why um, I have those there in a second. Walking onto the other side, I can show you right here, the lamb's ear. So we cut this back over here, um, just so that way it wasn't going to go in between the grass. Um, just kind of cleaning this up, tidying up a little bit, and that'll be ready for next season. Next up is this columbine over here. Um, we just cut it back for the season, so it'll grow nice and fresh next year. You can see kind of what these clumps look like. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. There's six in total. Next up is this area. This was probably the most painful out of any of them. These cacti plants have gotten way too out of control. I ended up using a pair of tongs to clean these up, but I just wanted to cut them back a lot because they were starting to overgrow the edge and these seem to be a little invasive. So I just wanted to make sure that I could keep these in check. This one, I took a lot off of it. You can see all the marks of where I took off pads from there, but don't worry, they're still gonna grow quite a bit next year. I planted this sedum. I actually don't remember this variety. There was one here already, and then I planted the second one, although it doesn't even look like there's two different ones there. Um, and then I just cut back a couple of these sedum over here, and this one is still looking absolutely gorgeous. Next up are these three containers. They had gazanias in them, but I just um, did them up for fall. So there's different things in here, some arborvitae, white pine. These were those hydrangea blooms I was talking about. This here actually is uh, Russian sage, a different variety or a different one that we had that um, I'll show you in a second because I didn't talk about that at the beginning of this, of this video. There is some pussy willow here, some yew, so all different things in those three different containers. I think they actually turned out very well. And then we still have the hardy succulent container here too. This is still doing well. This was the Russian sage here that I was talking about before. We ended up moving this to the back bed. I think here we're probably gonna put like Brunnera or Lamium or something, um, just something that's more like of a ground cover so that way these two can really grow. And this is where I got some of those red branches from, right here. And then last thing in the front, right along the front here is where we took some of those black eyed Susans. And this is where we ended up putting them. I'm kind of starting in the middle of the backyard, but you can see that there's, um, this black dragon cryptomeria here, we put three different clumps here, just kind of in a drift. These are supposed to get, I think like two to three feet tall or so. So we got those three there. Here's that Russian sage that I was talking about. And then if I move on this way, this stuff area over here stayed the same, but then we did a lot with these purple cone flowers. So one, two, three, and then there's like a fourth one right here. Those four stayed the same. We didn't end up moving those, but the rest of these, I think there was about 10 in total. Um, we moved to kind of create like a drift going this way. It went behind this seven sunflower and then into this back area over here. From that point over here, nothing over there really changed. We just took out those sunflowers, but the three blueberry bushes will remain. Um, I just cleaned up this bed. I'm gonna leave the corn in here. I wanna see if we can try to do like the no-till method for our garden next year. Um, moving over to the next bed, you can see all the bags we filled. Um, still got the peas here, but just cleaned up. There was like some marigolds here, just some stuff that you know wasn't gonna make it through any more time or was already dead. I just got rid of. Same thing in this bed over here, but I left everything that was still growing. There was a big basil plant that was over here in the tomato cage that I took out as well. So everything that's in the garden, we still can pick from and is still pretty much growing through this colder season. Just to give you a reference of where we are, those are the black eyed Susans there. I just kind of want to walk this way. Um, I did not clean up that hosta so that I can still do. Um, what we did do was I moved these and they're looking a little sad. I want to say a little PSA about these. These are the poppies. They originally were over in this area, but this butterfly bush is going to grow quite a bit next year. And this perennial sunflower is going to grow next year as well. And this is going to get quite large. So instead of trying to, you know, squeeze things into here, we're going to let those fill out. And then if we have any spaces to fill, maybe like in this front area and this front area, we'll put a couple smaller perennials. But because we had, I think there's like 11 or 12 of these in total, um, I moved these poppies here. 
Now, I did learn in one of my classes that poppies don't transplant very well. These are oriental red poppies. Um, we'll see how they do. They already started drooping from when I put them in the ground, but I did water them in. We'll see you know, what kind of happens in the next few weeks and if they end up coming up in the springtime. Um, but it's just an experiment. At worst case, I can always start more seeds too and do something else. Poppies, I think, are kind of a weird perennial. They only last for a few years. I don't think it's something that lasts for a super long time. Um, so it's just kind of whatever you want to get out of them. Um, but we'll try it. I think they're better in this space here um, and they really have the room to grow and I can keep that whole group together. And then the last thing that we did was I just cut back the astilbe, the two astilbe that are right here, and then the three hostas that were lining here. So here's one of those hostas and then here's one of the astilbe. My dad also cut the grass back over here. So less uh, leaves. There's still some leaves here. You know, some of it's just kind of mulched up. But honestly, if you take a look at this oak tree, you can see it's not nearly done yet. So we weren't going to bother too much with the leaves for today. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, we got a lot done. The only thing I didn't do is there's a solar fountain over there that I did earlier in the summer. Um, I just want to take that in for the winter because obviously it's water, so I do need to take it in before it freezes. Um, I'm not going to worry about that for today, though. That's not that much of a concern. But we got a lot done, and the garden is definitely ready for the winter time. So it just takes one day, really, to clean everything up. Just make an effort to do it, and things are going to look great. So besides that, I hope you guys like this video. I hope you can transplant and move all the perennials that you need to move or anything you need to cut back. Um, any questions or comments, anything like that, feel free to put them in the comment section down below. Besides that, I will see you in the next video.